Welcome back to another Invasive Brews Quick Facts episode. This time I'm going to be enjoying a Founders Brewing Company Chocolate Espresso. Um, Founders is up in Michigan. You can find it in a lot of places, uh, but this is an Imperial Stout, a Chocolate Espresso Imperial Stout, aged in bourbon barrels, so it's uh, 12% beer. So I'm going to have to try to get through this one before this beer. Use my Velociraptor Claw here. Today's episode is going to be all about the scourge of many backyard birders. Um, of course, we're going to be talking about the European house sparrow. Now, that is a very dark, very thick imperial stout. And yet a very good imperial stout. With that, let's take flight and get into it. House sparrows are one of the most widespread species here in North America, and they used to not be. Back in the 1800s, people wanted to be reminded of Europe and wanted the New World to look more like the old. So in 1850, Nicholas Pike, who was the director of the Brooklyn Institute, imported eight pairs of house sparrows into New York City. These pairs didn't take, so in 1852, he paid $200 for another shipment of these birds to come to New York City. And he wasn't the only one. In fact, there was a committee of the house sparrow reintroduction and they released these birds in the following spring of 1853. These birds finally took and started reproducing. After the successful releases in New York City, hundreds of these birds found themselves shipped over the Atlantic and released in hundreds of towns across the country. These introductions were termed a sign of progress and there were even laws put into place fining anyone who killed a house sparrow. Others introduced the house sparrows for pest control to help rid crops of nuisance insect pests and primarily caterpillars. But in the early 1900s, people started to realize what a mistake they had made by reintroducing this species. They started seeing that the native bird species were being affected by this bird and that they really weren't good at pest control. The adults prefer seeds over insect matter. So the laws were then reversed and this species was deemed a pest. The rats of the sky. And people started poisoning them, trapping them, shooting them, even eating them. The New York Times said that this bird was a delicacy fit to set before a king. So people started paying a dollar for a hundred of these little birds and there was even a remedy that said eating sparrow meat was a cure for erectile dysfunction. It's not. It's one of those old beliefs that, you know, is total BS. But nonetheless, people believed it and they started eating and making little pot pies of sparrows. But it was too late. Any efforts to control this pest uh, it wasn't really working. And now this little sparrow has made its way all the way up to Alaska. These birds are a very successful invasive species. They're able to reproduce three to four times a year and producing up to eight eggs per brood. After the eggs are laid, the incubation period is 10 to 14 days. During the fledgling stage, this is when the species consumes the most insect matter. So they really aren't a good pest control method, unlike our natural native birds like the bluebird and barn swallows and purple martins. The average lifespan of these sparrows is about three to five years meaning that each female has the potential of rearing 160 fledglings and the oldest one to be recorded out in the wild was 15 years. Now, this species has been said to be anthro-dependent, meaning it depends on human activity in order to survive. There's even been some studies out there that show that their diets has, has changed 
They're one of the few species of birds that can digest starches properly and digest things like bread or uh, tortillas, things that people usually take to uh, parks to feed the ducks, which I highly don't recommend you do that. Um, I'll bring some more information on that some other day. But this is one of the only species that can properly digest those items. These small yet aggressive birds have been listed as an invasive species due to their impacts on our native species and our economy. House sparrows are cavity nesters, so naturally they love birdhouses. It is this nesting trait that they pose the biggest threat to our native cavity nesting birds, such as wrens, bluebirds, purple martins. House sparrows will aggressively compete for prime nesting spots pushing already nesting birds out of these spots, and in some cases, even killing them. They've even been documented of going into a bluebird house or a bird house, killing the mother that was on the eggs, and building a nest right over the top of them. And it's not just the adults that they go after. They'll even destroy the eggs in the nest. If you've ever put out bird feeders, you probably have noticed that once one house sparrow finds it, many more will soon follow. These small bullies will push out other birds away from food and water resources. This aggressive behavior is one of the many stressors that our native birds face. They also consume and contaminate grain supplies for livestock and granaries. In the past, some crops were even shown to lose about 20% of their yield due to the consumption or the contamination uh, just from this one little invasive species. Short of trapping and dispatching like I have in previous videos, which I'll link in the description below, um, I don't like to kill any animal without finding a use. Uh, there are wildlife rehab areas that will take house sparrows as food for injured raptors. So that's what usually what I do with the trapped uh, sparrows and starlings that I do. But if you don't want to do that, there are ways to deter house sparrows from coming into your yard. If you have bird houses for bluebirds or purple martins or any other bird, be sure to stay vigilant. If you see sparrows or European starlings for that matter starting to build a nest in one of your houses, go in and remove it. And after several times you, of you removing it, it's going to kind of deter them from building in that area. And maybe a different species might come in and use it instead. If you have feeders out, you can buy seed that sparrows don't particularly prefer. They prefer millet over other seeds like sunflower, safflower, and thistle. Millet is usually kind of used as a cheaper filler in some of these brands, especially some of the cheaper brands. Um, they'll say wild bird seed or and they'll have a lot of millet in it just because millet is a cheap filler and this is one of the favorite ones that I've seen that the sparrows go for uh, first so when I'm trapping that's what I use for bait is millet and bread well I hope this video has shed some light on one of the most common widespread backyard birds there is here in North America if it did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't already. I try to bring more information on invasive species as I can. And until next time, plant native and drink local.